Thanks. The North Korean diplomat says that preparations are complete for a strike on the US territory of Guam if America, quote, will not act sensibly. It comes as the country's state television has been airing a warning over US South Korea war games which have started on the peninsula. No one can vouch that these huge forces concentrated in South Korea will not turn to actual war now that military tensions have reached fever pitch on the Korean peninsula. Well, the current 11-day drills involve 50,000 South Korean troops and 17,500 U.S. troops. Computer programs are also being used to simulate war. Prior to those exercises, even South Korea's defense ministry admitted concern that the drills could trigger a missile launch by their northern neighbor. There is a great possibility that North Korea will carry out strategic or local provocations to protest the latest UN sanctions and the UFG exercises. Let's bring in author and human rights attorney Eric Sirotkin joins me on the line now. Eric, do you think um, the US is provoking North Korea by conducting these military exercises in the, in the current tensions? Yes, I mean, this is a situation that goes on a couple times a year, but right now we're at such a crucial point that we need to step back and suspend these war games and not do anything to provoke the situation. What we've demonstrated through our actions again and again is a lack of creativity, a lack of courage, if you will, by President Trump and the administration and prior administrations to get creative on the Korean Peninsula. So when you run tens of thousands of troops up and down your border, simulating an invasion, shooting off live weapons, you are demonstrating a situation that's putting fuel on the fire and ends up uh, in a very precarious place for all concerned. Okay, US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has just uh, made comments uh, on the latest developments. Have a listen to what he said. Uh, I think it is worth noting that we have had no missile launches or provocative acts on the part of North Korea since the unanimous adoption of the UN Security Council resolution. And I want to take note of that. I want to acknowledge it. I'm, I uh, am pleased to see that the regime in Pyongyang has, has certainly demonstrated some level of restraint. I mean, if you look at the words coming from, from North Korea, if America does not act sensibly, one might say that that's slightly toned down from some of the previous uh, threats. Tillerson seems to be taking out that way. Do you think that we are going to see a de-escalation now? Well, unfortunately, the secretary isn't running the show, really, and we've seen that over and over again, that there are other people uh, stepping up and making uh, ballistic comments, uh, President Trump included. So realistically, it is, uh, there is this ebb and flow. The question is, do we at this point take advantage of it? Do we step forward and say, let's sit at the table, let's have formal relations with you so that we can recognize your right to exist, and we, what's happened in the media is they've left off the back end of Kim Jong-un's statements even, where he said that we uh, will not negotiate our nukes unless the U.S. ends its nuclear posture and hostile policy. We've got to jump on those comments. We've got to sit down and talk and schedule those situations so that we can make real change. And I call upon President Trump to show courage to be the great negotiator he claims he can be and sit down and have the courage it takes to talk, talk, and talk until you get a resolution. That has not happened in over 60 years in this conflict. Do you think that North Korea would actually follow through on its threats and launch a missile attack on Guam? You know, it's, it's so hard. They've said things that are unfortunate and are threatening and violate international law when you threaten these kind of attacks. Uh, I don't think that uh, they're going to create 
a situation where they fire on Guam and create a war on the Korean Peninsula. Everyone knows that it will lead to hundreds of thousands of deaths within the first 48 hours. So militarism is just not a solution on either side and it's going to take courage for someone in this tug of war to let go of the rope and sit down and get in the shoes of the other person, apply mediation techniques, uh, listen, uh, understand where they're coming from. And then when you do that, you understand why they may fear uh, the United States, why they may fear attacks, and why on the North we are fearful of bombs and attacks and everything else. This is a very volatile situation, but it is an opportunity if you seize the opportunity and you go in and you negotiate. There is no military option. And to pretend there is on either side is child's play. And it is time that we start acting like adults on the Korean Peninsula and set up a policy by where you sit down and you recognize people's right to exist. You set up a non-hostile policy. You have a peace treaty instead of a temporary armistice agreement to end a 63-year standoff and we move forward in that regard. But there are many reasons that interfere with that, and there's a lot of uh, weapons that are purchased. South Korea is one of the largest importers of weapons uh, from the United States in the world. A peaceful Korea doesn't always serve the interests North, South, China, uh, the U.S., but let's get the international community behind President Moon and his sunshine policies he's proposing, that's a big step and the U.S. needs to get on board. Eric, thanks for coming on RT. Author and human rights attorney Eric Sirotkin, his views there.